ignition. Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. I do apologize, I am sick. I uh, started TAing relatively recently, again, and a bunch of the first years have infected me. Hey Joe! Hey Anxious! Hey Anxious Pirate! How is it going? Hopefully y'all are doing well. Feel better? Yeah, thank you. 
the um it's definitely not the uh the worst I've had it um there we go I think this should get us our game found capture oh no that's capturing the wrong one Set a screen share, it's a screen share. Change that to bingo. Hey, thanks, Doc. I appreciate that. Chicken soup? Yeah, I had some, uh, actually, I bought some um, chunky, uh, the jerk chicken, um, jerk chicken chunky soup when it was on sale, and I actually had that. It was uh, it was very good. It's a bit, it's a, it has a bit of a kick to it, so it really clears out the sinuses a bit, but it's nice. Would recommend it if you're ever looking at buying chunky soups for whatever reason. Here we gotta get some jazz accompaniment. And um, welcome everyone, good morning, good afternoon. Just making it game in the deck selector and I'll get that switch over for y'all so you can see that we're getting better looking for games done safe new game Murph versus pizza it's fudge versus pizza there we go. I think I'll let them. Uh... We were supposed to play our game on Wednesday, but um, I wasn't feeling too great, so I actually rescheduled them for today. I know the game should be up. I think, I'm not sure, I think this is the last game to be played. I might be wrong. Um, oh, they already banned. Oh, I don't see them. I have to refresh. They're, 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 they are fast. They have prepped. That's bad. Okay. Um, so our ban for today... This one looks uh, it's a really really cool deck. Um, ghost form, ghost form on something like the Eat Eyes. Like this looks nasty. Um, they got a lot of they have a lot they have a lot of really cool decks. Um, this one looks really nasty. Uh, it's a lot of Coda. Double chain gang, double subtle, double subtle chain, money risk clocks. This looks like a cool, um, what is the key? Obsidian Forge. A double Tau Tau, Grimlockus Ducks, Saurus Rex, Triple Theros. This one looks pretty neat. This one looks like it has a really, really hard board to deal with. I don't think Exiles there sucks too. I don't think that's necessarily our ban though. Double Daughter, Double Tau Tau. It's very fast, but on this one I actually don't, I, I kind of feel like this 80 isn't going to be our ban. Key Charger sucks for us though. <coughs> um. Another animation ritual is an interesting one too. I'm sort of inclined um, to ban either CR Griffin or um, 
Holdsworth. Because one thing I think we just, my lineup is not very good at is handling Rush. I think we learned that lesson very well against Ganusa this season. Um, like this is just like, there's no um, nature's call. It's like perhaps we can deal with this. Just this looks like. Kind of just a dawn. not sure if we can actually deal with this. So it's either Holdsworth or Griffin as our first ban, I think. I don't know if we have a good way of dealing with a ghost form on something like an Edai. In this deck. Because we don't have a lot of purge or anything. We don't have, I mean, we are a bit low on bounce too. So it does sort of feel like we kind of want to ban Griffin. Because I don't know how else we deal with, um, I don't know how we deal with like a E-Die with the Ghost Form on it. And if that happens, I think it's an auto-lose for most of my decks. Like I, I just think this is an auto-lose for most. Because nothing can, nothing in my lineup can destroy an upgrade either. Like if I had to destroy them all, that'd be pretty nice. So I think we have to ban Griffin. That um, that goes from just is really nasty. So our first ban is going to be Griffin. They ban Margaret. That is entirely expected. So here we can either save Judge or we can save Jerito. Um, I think they're more likely to ban Jerito than they are to ban Judge. So to me, it sort of feels like, plus I, I don't mind Jerito into their matchups. They've only got one Infernus with no recursion on it. Oh, actually, never mind. We banned this deck. Um, they don't have any Infernuses, so it's not like our 20 pips are, are a problem. Um, Jerito has really good um, hard removal options. It's got a gateway to dis. It's got two implosions. Um, it's got a mark of disc. It's got nice um, control options, plus the, the uh, double safe house recycling the bone thing and the Infernus is really good. Um, Puncture Equilibrium is a nice, is good disruption as well. I think we just want to play Jerito here. So Jerito will be my save. And they saved Holdsworth, which is, that's, you know, that, that's certainly expected. This is, I think, if it high rolls, not even if it high rolls, if it rolls pretty well, I think this is kind of an auto loss. Um, it's a Midnight Keyforge. Ah, yes, well, it is quite late there for your Anxious Pirate. At least, I guess this must be, this must be like at least like an, like early morning for me must be a pretty okay time for you for watching streams. Which means you should be able to, do, which means you should be able to watch the, our Karen and I's 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. UTC minus four or Eastern time stream on Sunday for the Keyforge stream train. Um, okay, so they saved Holdsworth. And if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, I will, I will get in. You know, I've been slacking as a streamer. I didn't, I didn't get the, uh, here, let me, uh, copy this link. Oh, that's fair. That's fair, Anxious Pirate. Oh, uh, yeah, that sucks. I know that feeling. Look at that. Added a command to train. If you want to hit that, it'll give you a link to the stream schedule on Sunday um, for all the hyping. Anxious Pirate will be a part of that train. So will Zoc. So if you if you want to go see it, lots of other names will be on there too. Go check that out and uh, tune in if you can. So um, so they saved Holdsworth. So our ban after that. Uh, 
is, I think... This looks nasty, too. They're Pendragon. Yeah, I think because I just I just spammed it, I, I don't think it'll let you um, hit it again, unfortunately, there. So I think we just ban their 80. This might be... A, I'm looking at this, and maybe it's a Paper Tiger. But, I mean, our C isn't that good. And this looks like if... We can get a little bit of runaway board syndrome here. Um, but you can you you can do STE four as the command in my in my stream title. Um, as that the signups for that the Swindle Team event season four. Uh, Karen and I did a demo on it last Friday, uh, which is on Karen's YouTube. But if the um, for that you just have to. Um, the signups are closed September 30th. You need a team with two other people. Uh, Karen is more than happy to find you uh, another team if you need help with that. And then that's Tomaz, right? Yeah, we'll ban Tomaz. Oh, do I ban Tomaz? Do I ban something like Orion? I think Orion might be more of a trouble for us. I don't know, I'm sort of more go leaning towards lean getting um Orion. Yeah, it's super fair, anxious. Pirate. Uh, I think we just ban Orion here. I think we can ha maybe handle Tomaz better. It's just very fast, but has no pips. Man, it's a lot of creatures, though. Don't have great C. Uh, I think we... I think we'll ban Tomaz. They ban Judge. Damn it. Oh, I think... I think um, Judge is really good, but I think I would rather pick... Um, Okay, so these are the four we're left with. So I, I I don't disagree with saving Jericho here. I think it's a as much as I would like to play Judge. Oh, Kingdom Kingdom will happen, Dinobot. Kingdom Kingdom's also really fun. I don't think I have a, I don't have a link. To, I don't have a command for that one. But that also looks like a really really fun format. <sighs> okay, so of these three bit decks, which do we think they're gonna play first? My guess is they're probably going to play Orion or Holdsworth first. I think if that's the case, I would rather play Samir. They picked Isadora. Yeah, okay, I think we're fine with this. And they sent me a game link. The password is that is usual. We're playing Samir. Here we go. So it should be, um, I think this should be a fairly good set of games. But man. Sundu Kingdom looks really fun. I don't, I think I can, um, get a real quick, um, I know, I, Joe, I actually just saw your DM there about the, um, IBR League. I don't know if I'm going to be, um, Signing up for the ABR League this season, just because I know, um, because sort of with the new with the semester starting back up, I've been pretty busy, and it's been um, I think because I'll be I'll be doing like more streaming with Karen more regularly, and then I'll also be doing feature matches for um, ST four, so I think with that going on. Um, and then plus like my, my my grad school picking back up 
I would um, probably just gonna pro probably take a bit of a break. Well, I like this hand, but not right now. So Mulligan. Yeah, that's better. Um, so I think I'll probably be taking a um, small break. No. Oh. It's like just kind of like reducing some of the key forge I'll be playing, um, sort of coming up. I'm part of the NKFL Sealed League, which I'm really excited for. Uh, and then ST4, and I'll probably be doing the uh, KFPL qualifiers. But I th and then I'll be in the sign up. The sign ups for Kagi five, uh, Kagi 6.0 should be going up very soon. Um because I want that to start very early, um, very early October. Yeah, I know, Anxious Pirate. It's a lot of Keyforge right now. And uh, with, I'm not gonna be, I'm just gonna be organizing Kage. I won't be playing in it this, this season so I can um, get the, uh... yeah, it's, it's, I'm doing a lot right now and I'm definitely feeling it. Um, and so, since I'm running Kagi, I'm not going to be playing in it, just in case people drop. But, um... Yeah, no, I know it's I know it's not a it's not a it's not a small task. <laughs> not at all. Especially because of all the stuff a lot of stuff for Kagi, um oh, that's good, no frame value. I think we're okay to just run shadows here, still one off the bait and switch. Get this um, budget knuckles Bolton down. Yes, that budget, that budget Knuckles Bolton is also a nine effective power card. That is exactly true. Okay. And we have Snag's Mirror. So we can lock him out of Dis here. Happy to do that, I think. So first we'll pain reaction. I think we'd pain reaction here. Kill that. We will get the snaret down over here. Get the infernus down on the right. Choose theirs. We'll get rid of their draining touch and their lay of the land. And yeah, I should have drawn first. Not that it matters here, but I should have drawn first, so I had a better idea of what I was playing into. I have a bad habit of doing that sometimes. I forget about my drop hips. Um, that would have been better. So they're locked out of dis. If they go shadows here, we're happy to go logos. And apologize, I am a little bit stuffy. So I'll just take a two seconds and blow my nose here.
So far, so good. First game? This is first game, Zeramis, yeah. I have Samir here. And we're not allowed to reap. But I think we're actually, we're fine to... But I do kind of want to go to lo into Logos. I have to go into Logos or Dis. And I kind of want to just... We call Logos and we just, we fight here. I don't necessarily want that Eater of the Dead doing a lot, doing too much. But if we go Logos, they're happy to go Shadow. They can go Shadows again. Or Dis. They'll probably go Dis next turn. So I could crash the Infomorph into either the Eater of the Dead or the Chain Gang. We got two chain gangs and two subtle chains. We saw one subtle chain go back into the deck, be used and go back into the deck already. Well, if they go... So, we haven't played a ton of shadows. We played more discs, so we're more likely to get more shadows next turn. Um, so, if we kill their... Chain gang, they're less likely to lock us out of that. And this only gets a plus one power, so this is still threatening killing here if you go Shadows next turn. So we'll call Logos. Um, first, we'll. This won't steal, right? Has more amber than me? Yeah. Well, first, we'll play the Q mech down. Okay, that's that draw. Yeah, we don't actually narrow siphon. So we'll have a Logica. Okay, we get Daughter. So here we fight there. We'll narrow siphon and we'll get Daughter down on the right. Because we have a Cinder that can come out, but that probably won't be coming out until... So we can't protect both right now. I think I'd rather protect either the daughter or the stern. So put the daughter down on the right flank so we don't block her. Um, there, yeah, that's pretty good. I got a big shadows turn. They're happy. They can go shadows, and we can go either logos or dis. If they go dis, um, then we're happy to go shadows. This, that's okay. They'll probably add a Romaine Killer Snarat, yep. Mike Malazan fight daughter. Move Qmex. Capture one. Eater of the Dead fight the Qmex is my guess. And then Eat of the dead and they'll purge what? Purge our Rizzo or Snaret or our Munchling? Oh, that's interesting. What are they, um, what are they purging? Purge Munchling. That's presumably for our library card. So, we can call Shadows. Um, I think first off we kill, I think we have to kill the Eater of the Dead. First we'll discard from their hand. Discard a Lay of the Land, don't mind seeing that. Play our Lucky Dice, play our Bone Rot Venom, and we'll attach our Bone Rot Venom to their frame, which will kill it the first time it's used. Um, here we'll fight their Eater of the Dead. We don't want them purging too much of our creatures. 
because we do want to get them back on the Grim Reminder. We will Perplexing Sophistry. Okay, they discard Medic Ingram. Happy to see that. Happy to see that gone. So their Star Alliance turn is looking a lot more neutered here. And then we'll get the Smiling Ruth down. So I choose this again, which is totally fair. I think if they let us forge, um, destroy Infernus. Are they gonna purge my my Infernus or their Infernus? They don't have one. Now, if we do forge a key here, I can just steal the either spider or the frame. That'd be pretty cool. Wait, they actually fought the Smiling Ruth? I guess I don't know what that what that uh, question mark is for. So here... So we forge, and we have a lucky dice. Mm, I think if we go logos, they'll have to kill their own one of their own disc creatures. But we could just we could trade off of the um, could trade off the. Uh, the Infomorph with the Malice on the Positron Bolt. Do three, two, one. Fight here for that one. And the Edoram is still alive, however. I think we have to go Logos. First, we play Library card. I got a Grim Reminder. Oh, okay, that's fine, actually. So, here's probably worth. I can play that. Um, and then, so do we want a lucky dice? Because it's only during my opponent's next turn, it's not right now. Well, I still think we Positron Bolt there. So I could fight... No, that doesn't... What am I thinking? That doesn't even work. Um, but I honestly kind of want to get... It'll be a Disc turn, then a Logos turn. And they'll want to be incentivized to kill the Qmax anyways. So I think we just reap one, two, three. Not be dealt damage. So I'm still think we because that does that only gets us to five. It doesn't get us to check. So I still think we fight here to trade the Malazan, reap reap, and then do we crack lucky dice or not? I think the answer is no. But I don't think we're going to get a better time to, necessarily. Unless we get... Um, 
Actually, probably no, because then we can set up... If they destroy things, we can have better options for a Grim Reminder, because right now what we have is... Um, we've got good discs, right? One, two, three, four. Probably going discs anyways, but... I think we want to save it for when our Snarets get out. Might be wrong about that, but... I mean, they might just end up... I doubt they're going dis here again. If they go dis here again, they're a wild one. Okay, pain reaction here is pretty good. Is this an Omni? Yeah. Like, I'd rather crack Lucky Dice once their Snoret gets down. Rather than, um... Now. And what do we have left for logos? Just the mind over matter. Um. Yeah, so library card is not part of, is probably not getting cracked soon. I'm actually kind of I think I'd be more okay if the bone thing shows up a little bit later. But I also don't wouldn't necessarily mind. Oh, thanks for the follow, Tanzida. Hopefully, I pronounced that name correctly. Okay, so I actually did go dis again. So here we can go shadows again. We get the Miazo bomb. So basically, we can either go shadows or we can go BD logos and go BDQ. I mean, we can actually just use our whole board here. If we call logos. And then we set up, we set up inherently our, our Grim Reminder for next turn by, and our library card by smacking, well, we're gonna call disc probably. Um, or we go shadows, we get our Miazo Bomb online, we get our Game G online, we reap to, we go to check. I think we call shadows, and we just get this down, get our Game G down, we reap to check. And here might actually be a good time to use Lucky Dice. But stealth damage, and the Edorome can still still reap, but they'd have to go back into dis. Man. I think we just say go ahead. So... Star Alliance, thank god. Okay. Red alert. Well, we know that QMX was eventually going to do that. What are the archiving? Subtle chain, got it. So we know they got a subtle chain in there. So here I think we call dis. We don't take our archives. 
What do you do? Deal two damage. Hmm. If only that was a damage enhanced one, that'd actually be a lot nicer. So here we go. Go Brabble on the right. And we want a Grim Reminder for Dis. Getting this, 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 this. So we get five creatures from Dis. Four. One, two, three, four. Four. We get one, two, three creatures from Shadows. One. Cre two creatures in Logos. So we call it Dis because it also has an Inferno, which is a good Amber Control, plus other Snarat, plus our Cinder. Um. So we're presumably going to be locked out of Dis for a turn from their own Dis. But here's, I think we pain reaction here. We go to check. We get our Brabble down. We get our Snoret down. We Grim Reminder for Dis. I wonder if that would have been better. Is deal two damage here and then kill the other roommate. No, they're locked out of it. It's be two damage here and kill that. Hmm. No, I think we don't hold that. And I think we crack. Hmm. I wonder if it's just better to hold it and wait for this one to crack it then. No, I think we just... Yeah. Shadows. So we know they have a subtle chain. They have a subtle chain in uh, archives. This has been a grindy for game one. Starlands plant. Kaimor Eclipse. Breaker Hill. So here we forge red. So here we call Logos, and we crack our library card, and we just... Get one, two, three draws. Mm-hmm. Here we call Logos, take our archives. We will. I wonder if it's worth it. No, I think we just. I think we hold our mutagenic serum. So we do that. First is playing Qmax. Draw. Um. Yeah, auto encoder here doesn't really matter with the capture pips. So we play auto encoder. We'll capture. Um, oh man, do we actually just hold the BDQ? I think we actually hold the BDQ here and we just archive, we get a messy archives. Or do we, do we just kill them? They still have that subtle chain in the archives. So we can either kill probably Dendrix, Breaker Hill, and Arome, we just give him a messy archives. 
Because if they break our hill next to a chain gang... Um... So I actually don't know if this... Can a creature have two actions? Right, so like, if Breaker Hill is next to a chain gang, the chain gang can't both s steal two off of that action, right? It'd be a second action. Yeah, okay, thank you, Denabot. That's, that's, yeah, okay, thank you. That is that is what I thought. So I'm not actually worried if they settle, settle chain next to a, a Breaker Hill. Cause that's, that's just straight worse. So I think we're okay with mind over mattering here and actually holding the Bouncing Death Quark. But I would like to reshuffle. Reshuffling would be nice. So maybe we BDQ just for the sake of killing the Edorome and getting them even messier archives. Because it might be better to just yeah, I think we'll actually just hold the BDQ here and we just play the Mind Over Matter. But then we don't reshuffle. And I would like to reshuffle into those two. So... Uh, man. Well, no, because we'll reshuffle once we get all of our discs out. So I'll play Mind Over Matter. And then we have a BDQ for the for the Inspector and that. So we'll Mind Over Matter here. Library card first, get the Shadow Dis in hand. Send back over to them with an absolutely massive hand. So Gamji, Munchling are purged, Library card is purged. And they don't have an Inferno, so I'm not super upset about that. We know we will be locked out. Here we'll, we'll, we can go Shadows though, or we can go um, Um, shadows or logos. Because, you know, one piece here that um, is if the Nexus survives. Exhume. What are they exhuming? Well, I was expecting him to lock me out of Disc or Lamy because of, um, um, I was going to take my archives anyway, so he's pretty incentivized to do that. Because he knew I grim remindered. Um, That is fair. It will be interesting to see what they exhume back. They can exhume back the Harbinger, they can exhume back the Frayne, Chain Gang, or... They Medic Ingrams. The Edorome, or... Um, so here we go, Shadows, I think. And we lock them out of their Shadows, so they have to go as either Starlands or Disc next turn. Shadows, 
you know, we do take the archives. We play the bow nothing down. We play the nexus down. Play the Lego thief down. But like most of their dis is gone. I think it has to be at this point. So. Perhaps not. Yeah, one, two, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They have two discards left in hand and deck. Next turn. So here we can go Logos or Shadows. Here we call Logos. We do this, we redraw. And we can, we can actually crack this to hit Lyco Thief to pop the ward here. I think is actually worth it. So here we fight there. I B D Q hit, hit that, hit that, and we hit the bone thing. And just that. Probably have a. They play a Ronnie. This would have been a good. Uh, it's okay. They'll be under Shadow of Dis next turn. Discards Brabble. Okay. So then here we are actually pretty happy to call Dis. Oh, that's nice. Um. We call Dis. Don't take our archives. First things first is we play in furnace. We pick lay of the land and we pick exhum. We want pips gone. So we got that. We get you down. Get you down. Get you down. Get that down. Dominator Bobble. Shadow Dis. Right, and their Shadow of Dis here turns off of uh, turns off all of their Shadows creatures and their Starlands creatures. So hopefully they have a very unimpactful turn here in a second. Stealth mode here is fine. It deals two damage to Snarats, right? Play too much each and every creature they have never on it. Yeah. And so here what we'll do is we're going to be fighting into... Oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah, shout out this. So here we'll be fighting Infernus into Chain Gang, Cinder into... This is Elusive. Um, probably We'll probably Inspector here.
Okay, we can always send her here. Or we can go, so I think we call, we call this, um, we, there's gonna be three fights, Inspector, Infernus, Cinder. One, two, reap, reap. It's gonna be a fight, 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 a reap, and a reap. What did they hit? Minor or matter? Perfect. That's fine by me. What are some of my archives then? Uh, another Logos card? Dope. Do they have a way to pop the Brand of Fanatic? Just the Obsidian Forge? Wait, they don't have any way in Shadows to pop it, right? Or, um. Star Alliance? So they've either have to. So if we just keep calling disc, they cannot do that. So we can call it disc again. And not take the archives into our hands. Is there any way, anything we want to fight? Maybe the information officer Gray we want to fight? Um... Maybe we want to kill Simon? Or do we just want to reap out? How many Ronnies do they have? They just redrew. They're one Ronnie. They can't go dis, so they can't pop their brand. Um... I th think if we just go to nine here, I don't think they can stop us. So I think we just reap. Then we kill our inspector. Hits the light of the archons. I mean, the Obsidian Forge over there is a concern, but I don't think there's no way for them to use it if we just if we keep calling this, which they're gonna board control us down eventually if they just fight with like something like the Brend. This definitely wasn't a super clean game from me. I do not. It does not feel like a super clean game. I think there's certainly th better things I could have done. Okay, it's a Kirby.
GG. Well played. That was a tough. That was a tough one. That was a grind. Good game. Very well played, Pizza. Second game. No worries. I'm saying they have a little bit of lag, which is no worries at all, but it happens. Um they left. That was a three to two. Oh refresh. Samir wins. Not necessarily best for my key difference in the way it wins, though. Um, so what's left? So they just played this. They just played Isadora. So Isadora is gone. Next they have Pendragon, Orion, and Holdsworth. Um, my guess is they'll probably play Holdsworth next. If that's the case... So, of these three decks, I think... I think Jerito has the best chance. going to be Jericho Angle. Not because it's my save deck, just because I, I think it has the best chance. Holdsworth, yeah. So it's a race, and we're going to race them. Uh. Maybe Jerto. Yeah, this will be a race. Good old fashioned. Good old fashioned Keyforge race. Coda race versus MM race? I mean, Jerto's not really a rush deck in the same way, but it's more like of a consistent neighbor generation with the 20 pips, but. This will be. A white knuckle one for sure. Oh, this is a mulligan. Oh, I'm actually pretty happy to see the double safe house that early though. So we could mark of dis implosion their mushroom man, or we could double safe house. I think we call it double shadows, double safe house. I have a pretty decent. Oh yeah, that's perfect. They have no R, no R. That is a headhunter. So I think here we call this. Mark of Mark of Dis their Headhunter Implosion 
Panther, Headhunter, Playjacker. Playlands Assault. Okay. And here we'll call Shadows. We'll look over there. Macus Asp, Bonithing. Safe House, the Bonithing. Also, the Art on Macus Asp is so cool. Underrated. Underrated art. Also, the poison on Mac is asking in the skirmish is really, really, really good. Really good. Urchin, take me off check. I don't think they have a super ton of... Um, Magda. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I think we're actually cool to go untamed. Play the Bumblebird out. Um, be Song of the Wild, capturing both Hunt and Macus Asp. Play Rapid Evolution to Macus Asp. So Macus Asp is now absolutely gigantic. Um, okay, we got Ritual of Tognath and a Cinder. They can what? They can action steal one and reap. I mean, Magus has but 16 power is kind of hard to deal with. Even the Mushroom Man can't take it out. Untamed Halicor. Oh, Halicor is actually a pretty interesting one. Cool. It's one of those things where I'm actually pretty okay in this deck generally to get stuff like that purged. Do they have any Amber Control in Holdsworth? That's in... Murmooks. Murmook coming down? Forge Blue. Can Waking Nightmare. That gets us to... 5. Okay. But we can Waking Nightmare attack them for 1 here. Or we do... Dark Wave. No, Dark Wave is probably for next turn. Oof. Um. I think we just call. I think we call this here. Not much choice. We Ritual. We Cinder. We Waking. Gateway, okay. So they pay the seven amber. Mushroom Man is dead. Brobnar. Auto Cannon. Smith. Rah, okay. So, here what do we even do? Here we probably call Shadows. Take the Archive, and we Dark Wave. We 
about nothing. Steal one boss Zarek. Safe out the bow nothing again. Urchin me? Fade and switch just to steal one. Oh no, they will still two. Urchin, that sucks. Yeah, I don't think we can't take him off check here, but maybe we can with um Call and Tamed. Um We've got Amber Spine Mongrel down, we'll do Growth Surge. Okay, Song of the Wild, Punk. Get that down. Get resurgence to get back. Yeah, you know, Drekker and. Yeah, we just. This is what we needed. GG. Yeah. Too much rush, which I figured is what probably would happen. No luck there at all. That just looked like. Can do. And, yeah, I don't think. I think, um. Griffin had to be our ban one, because I think it's just too hard to deal with. Holdsworth is. Maybe should have was, was saved, so. Just couldn't quite outrace them, but not much. You could, probably something I can do there. But needed to see more of my answers. I mean, the nice thing about facing rushes is games are over quick. Yeah. GG's. Not much you can do. It's a 3 to 1. So next it's Orion into This is where I like man like I'm I'm excited to get into next season and change my lineup a little bit cuz I'm not su really not like super happy with with any of it. I think they're probably going to go Orion. No, not over yet. Not over yet at all. Um, I think maybe this might be a Greenberg angle. I'm not sure what a good answer, besides like I guess like lots of TMTPs, is into Coda Rush like that. Um, I don't really think I, I'm not sure if I have anything in my collection that really does super well into Quota Rush. Like that, I had a really hard time into Ganusa's lineup because of that. Um, so it's just really hard to deal with. Uh, maybe, uh, that's not true, maybe I have some that can deal with it, but um, it's hard. I mean, you pretty much just have that. You have that. You have to have your answers, and if you don't, then you're screwed. So if they're playing Pendragon with a double control of the weak, and you know if they're playing this sort of board, there is certainly a the amount of C and good C they have. I don't. I'm not really looking to play the Crude Soothsayer Judd. The, sorry, the um, Craving Scout Senator. Because these two... These two aren't staying in my lineup for next season. I don't think. Maybe? 
but I don't think they're probably they're probably not going to stay in my in my lineup for next season. I think I'm more inclined to go Grunberg here than I am to go the Craving Scout Senator. And a lot of that is a lot of that is due to the board control. But the Favian, you know, if the Favian lives, that, but the Favian's not going to live with like board controls like uh, Gateway and um, you know, Ammonia Clouds and whatnot. So. There's all the strange gizmos, so, and then these ones have a lot of, like, drum bike. You know, I think Greenberg just has a better tools to deal with stuff like that. More consistent tools to deal with it, so we'll go Greenberg. And Orion, yeah. I think Greenberg has a better better shot into, into Orion than uh, the Craving Scout Center does. I think Orion is certainly the, be the better pick for them of the two decks left in terms of what I have left. I think that's certainly the right choice. I'm also inclined to think that they they put themselves in a better position ordering wise for decks. Um than I did. Well exactly fifty percent win rate on Grudberg. Um But it's also partially just because now that the season's over, I'm pretty happy to say this, but these two decks, I'm honestly, like, Grunberg and Craving Sassetter, I don't even necessarily want to play, like, half the time, which I've come to figure out over the season, so, like, you know, if with two of the, with, with, you know, these three getting consistently banned, and I'm left with these, one of the, some variation of the theme there. felt like my options were very limited, which is not what I want for Hexad. I don't, like, I want to feel like I have a lot more control over, um, over stuff like that. So here we mulligan. Yeah, we'll start off with an Adaptoid and a, uh, Diametric Charge. That's okay. But seeing the, um, yeah, exactly, Dinobot, and I, I just, I haven't been feeling, um, um, I haven't been feeling like they've been going my way. So actually, I think we can, do we disruption field the Remiel? I kind of want a disruption field the remeal on like a static effect creature, not necessarily like a. I, I like that actually. I like that. I like that. So we get this. We disruption field there. Do that for the pip. So if they want to continuously tax themselves. And then we'll call Logos. We'll get the Adaptoid. Get Diametric Charge. You know, we'll give Fight Steel one here. I'll just do that and we'll discard our fluorescence. So I have some I actually have some pretty good ideas already. Um, I have some pretty good ideas of what I want to see. Does this seem bugged? Like, why is this not? This should be two counters, right? 
But it seems to only do when the armor gets updated. Weird. Yeah, so here we call this. I think we actually just, I think we just implosion off the thing. Hit the bulwark. Hit the brabble. Hit that. And we'll just get the soul fiddle down. We'll eventually soul fiddle the uh, remeal too. And you know, part of part of this also has been just the fact that I've been pretty down on the Craving Scout Center recently, and I don't think it's necessarily due to the deck's fault. I think it's just the meta, the meta that the NKFL presents right now is not really conducive to um, two high creature decks that don't have a lot of pips, because um, the board control is quite high. So here we go. I'm gonna call this. Um, gonna reap. I'm gonna enrage your remeal. Suck it. Um, I'm gonna reap here. I'm gonna infernus. And I'm gonna purge your blinding light and protect the weak. And then I'm going to implosion, attacking my brabble for one of your shoulders. So, I think uh, it's also just like not a good. It's better, and it's better in a triad for that reason. Okay, this looks like a pretty decent logo angle, though. We'll kill the shadow self and the urchin with the standardized testing. Yeah, exactly, Dinobot, and like it was, it was in my lineup for the first. It was one of the definitely one of the better decks I, I opened when I first started in season fifteen. But I think like my options are a lot better now, and I think it was in there as a bit of a legacy deck. Um, I think right now it's just doing a disservice to my lineup. It can do better than that, and I think I'll just plan on take moving that out for. I already have some good ideas of decks that I want to swap in for it. So I'm. I'm excited to get into next season to, to try and test out those um, those ideas. So we'll call logos here, and we'll standardize testing, get those two off the board, play the research smoko, get that onto the snoret, get that down. We will get this down I don't actually don't think I will exalt but that guarantees it kills itself they have good C though so I think we don't exalt here okay we've eventually through some grit that uh We've eventually gotten into a Star Alliance hand. That's nice. And also, like, something I could try it. I think, um, yeah, I figured that was going to happen. Um, for, for something like a triad, I think you're more... Because there's, I think you're more likely to, to put yourself in a better situation than something like a Hexad with, the, with two things. And then, like, I'm never going to, like... You know? So I, I think it, it'll come out, and something else will come in. So here we call friendly creature, friendly creature captures one amber. Yeah. Okay. 
so here we call Star Alliance. We will room in Yorg, capture onto Infernus, play Xeno training, capturing here, all of it here. Transporter platform the Yorg, Quintrino Flux, Smoko, and Remiel. Leyland should have done this first. Um, yeah, we'll draw Nell. So you got a disc turn coming up. So we've got Yorg. That'll go. I'll just go into Yorg. We got Nell. That'll go into that. And we've got Chan. So, that's pretty good, actually. And Kuzapi is actually okay. So, here... Here we can actually gateway... So we can get Cinder back. So we can actually, we could gateway, get this back, mind fire for a bit of disruption. Yeah, call this, we'll take the archives. Maybe it feels weird to gateway, but we'll gateway for that. We'll mind fire, pawn sacrifice to steal one. Perfecto. And we'll get the anguish down. Nothing, no way to damage it, unfortunately, but. No way to tax there. I wonder if that's totally okay to make him call shadows again. Mm -hmm. Five, six, seven. Like here, if we call dis, we reap mark of dis them fight. That's actually nice. Blue, and here we probably go... And here we can go Star Alliance. Go on the right here. Play Blast Shielding. Transporter platform. Do we give the Cinder skirmish? No, I think we just. Um, that on the right, and we blast shielding the Cinder. Well, I got the Anthony with the transporter platform, which it can um, do a ton. In which case, the BDQ becomes uh, more relevant than the uh, Kazat. Hmm. Well, then here I think we're totally okay to... 
We won't go to check. I think we can call it Logos. Try and get a better hand here. First we play Flesh and Bloom to draw. Okay. Um, we play the Munchling. We deal ping one here. We will... So we can actually just, we can actually just straight up kill the ZKL here. But I think we're actually better archiving the BDQ and discarding the Kurzap. I think that's a better play here. Feels really weird to be gone to have gone through this this whole deck already. But it is turn ten. Cause Grimberg's not fast. Grimberg's pretty slow. Like Grimberg I guess it not super slow. It has a seven point six kind of. But now it doesn't usually live long enough to get a to get good stuff like that. So we can call Starlines, or we can call Dis. I think we, I think we call Dis. And we can go like fight, whale, reap. Maybe we just enrage this. I think we just probably enrage that actually. I just kind of liked it for the uh, extra one thing. I don't think, shouldn't think we need that. We just like enraged the um, urchin and we reap for the brabble and whale the dodger. Or we can call Star Alliance, we can reap. Or we can play Diametric Charge. Oh, that's just a Sacrobot though. I think this is a better call here. So before I click this, we are planning on I can fight the Dodger. That'll do. That'll leave two damage here. Um, Soul Fiddle. The Urchin and just Reap. It's probably better. So we'll call this here. But we don't need to do that. Maybe we just fight the ZKO. The ZKO. Either way, we're reaping here. I think we enrage the urchin. Because they have an arise. No, not on this one. Um, whale the dodger. Rage the Urchin, and their Poison Wave, and like their all their mass. Um, does that fairly well? We still got another Urchin. To, no, that Urchin's dead, right? Yeah. Um. So, but then if we kill Brabble, we get go to check. So, get the Brabble down. Reap, kill the Brabble. Did I really to deal three damage? Finishing blow? That doesn't help me. Pawn sacrifice. We're not going to seven. No, I think we keep it here. So then here we go, Star Alliance. I think. Uh, so we can actually draw off now. 
Yeah, so it costs giants. We... Oh, no, no, no. We wanted to reap. Uh, no, it's okay. That was a misplay. But I'll take that. That is my fault. Um, so we get Anthony down. Play the land. Um, we'd rather go dis here. So we play, we'll take... Because we're only draw three, so we'll draw all. We'll draw all of these, um, and an extra. So it doesn't really matter what we do here. We'll put big gateway on the bottom, and then effervescent and then mark, and then we'll armory officer no, and then we'll play this upgrade onto Cinder. Um, again, not going to seven for the drumble. I don't want to go to seven for the drumble. We pass back to them. Do they play Drumble already? Am I playing around something that doesn't exist? Yeah, not reaping was good. Yeah, in hindsight, not reaping actually is good. Yes, yeah, so not playing. Not I haven't played Drumble because um, we do actually we do actually genuinely genuinely want to play around Drumble. So not reaping saved me there. There's a, I guess there's a re there's a reason my hands knew what they were doing. Oh, Annihilation Ritual, eh? Oof. Annihilation Ritual is really scary. Yeah, I asked you exactly, Dinobot. My hands were in better control than my my body. My, my mind. I still think we actually want, um, because we can just enrage the ZKL, ZKL. Make a mark of this them into shadows. They can't have anything in shadows anymore, right? Like they can't. They've played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight cards in shadows, nine cards in shadows. How many cards in sanctum do they have? They played one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So they have less sanctum in hand. So maybe we just take it. We uh, mark it as their Zekio. Yeah, that's in there. That I counted the two purged. I think. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe it's nine, ten. Yeah. And then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so equal amount of that. And they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they've got a, they have not got a clean hand over there. That's what that means. So I think we do mark of them into Sanctum. Because I think they've used Elder Amber Control in Sanctum too. They don't, haven't used Bagan. I don't actually know what Bagan does. Oh. Well, Bogan's actually probably pretty good here. But they still haven't used Drumble, either. Hmm. Maybe we call Dis on them, then. Make them use the discards in hand. Ooh. That's actually not a bad call. They're about to redraw, so I think we want to use our Infernus anyways. So we will reap. So I think we do Mark of Dis. We Mark of Dis, they're there. Because they've got Drumble, which they won't want to play right now. So we Mark of Dis there. 
we enrage their Zekiel. We get the Cinder down. We play the Infernus on the right. Pick theirs. We take their Miasma. And we take their... Take Hostages or their Pawn Sacrifice. Or do we take their Amber Control? Do we purge an Urchin? But the Urchin's the urchin going to get purged off of their Annihilation Ritual anyways. Um, so I think we then we take something like, probably take Hostages. Yeah. And then we hold the Gateway for Drumble? Do we bother holding this gateway at all? We have a BDQ. They've used their gateway, so they don't have a board wipe. So with BDQ and Archives, we probably don't actually need to hold it for the Drumble. So I think we're actually pretty okay discarding this. As spooky as that feels, I think with that in Archives, we can discard this. Implosion too, actually, that's okay. Poltergeist, they kill my transport platform? Killing my autovac. Noise. Ember Imp. Well, Ember Imp is going to be killed by my diametric charge. So here we call a Logos. Logos and not take the archives, mind you. So we call Logos, we don't take the Archives. So first we're going to... No, we actually don't do that. This is one damage with two splash. And we'll Fission Bloom that. So first we get Adaptoid down. To over here. We... Vision Bloom, play the Diametric Charge. We'll resolve Diametric Charge first. We'll deal one here with two things. It can get Fight Steal one. Play Sacrobot down. And I think we discard Standardized Testing. And if they somehow get a big um, burst, we can call F logos and get effervescent down again. Um, but I think we're okay holding effervescent. Perfect. I love that disruption field. Okay, there's a big on. So then they're gonna fight my Adaptoid. Now mind you, if we go Star Alliance again, we're gonna get our Anthony back. So here we can actually go Star Alliance. And we want to play around Drumble because that still has not come down. So we just actually want to go to, we actually want to go to six only here. Um, so first things first is we we don't reap. I think we just play the disruption field down. So, first we do Yorg. 
on the right, capture one to the Sacrobot. We'll give that plus two armor. Um, we'll bounce. Um, yeah, we'll play Xeno Training and we'll do Xeno Training first. We'll capture one. Capture your elusive. No, so yeah, we'll capture it here. And we'll do Fight Steal one. That's six. Do a transporter platform. And we put it back down. And we don't go to seven. If they can keep taking us off, six. Um, good. But we just keep going to seven and make them really, really waste that. Um, Leaves play, yeah, okay. Okay. So we'll call Star Alliance again. And yeah, we can kill the Urchin and Magda. So we'll call Star Alliance. First we can Trino Flux. We can Trino Flux the Urchin and Magda. That won't hit any of our hit or adaptoid. So we can Trino Flux Adaptoid. And yeah, we give it Fight Steel 1. We choose Adaptoid. We choose Urchin. Purged. We. Yeah, we action here to Steel 1. Transporter platform and turn. Not going to seven. Okay, that's fairly interesting. So here, actually, I think we can actually go Logos. Um, do we Effervescent? Or, because we can Logos and go like one, two, capture only one. If we go Star Alliance. But we do go back up to six. But if we go low ghost, we can actually capture two off of Research Smoko. I wonder if that's worth it, because we can effervescent them. <laughs> we can effervescent them um, and capture two off the Research Smoko. Or that might be, that probably isn't, wait till they kill this. So I think we can actually just call Star Alliance. No. Because we can play Xeno Training to steal one there. Disruption field to get back to six. Oh man. I mean, they've been holding, uh, our, uh, don't tell me the Drumble's in archives. That's probably where it is, isn't it? So maybe I should just force it out. Maybe I should just force it out. Yeah, probably just probably worth forcing it out there. Maybe not. We can call Logos. That'll bring it up. That'll bring it up. This time we can see. Get that out of the way. Um, doesn't give us to check though.
Oh, man, okay. Put myself in a weird spot here. I can always just go Lash. I'm, I'm, I'm not playing this right. Um, yeah, I'm not playing this right right now. So we do call Dis here. Um, we'll Mind Fire. Shuler, that's nice. Enrage that. Oh, I need these pips, though. Um... We discard one of them. Yeah, I'm not playing this right anymore. I've um, the jumble's certainly in archives. Uh, now, now that I've, hand just says nothing, right? It's on a flank. No, it's not on a flank. They still have the other shuler. So in this case, um, now we can call Logos, say yes, um, so first things first is we effervescent, and we play Sacrobot, we play Fission Bloom. We get you down, capture two under you. We get you down, we ex actually exalt and just do three damage here. We'll BDQ you and you. Say nope. Okay, maybe this time we can actually actually do something. Shouldn't have exalted there, though. Oh, okay. Let's run our archives. Let's cruise out. Oh, this is actually a perfect Krizap term. Unironically. Um, these are both mutants. So I think we can actually call Logos, take the archive, um, Plaker's app. First we reap, discard the Chan, take the Mind Fire. That's okay. Um, reap, discard one of the implosions, pick a diametric charge. Perfect. We get to check this way. Do that. Diametric charge just here. Ah, oh, sheesh. Yeah, they can lash. They had gateway, okay. That makes sense. Poltergeist the transporter platform. Damn. Okay, well we can call this. Man, I definitely I didn't play this game super well. Disappointing. I think it could have been good, just you know. 
didn't play as it didn't I didn't play it super well. GG. Yeah. I should have I should have pushed harder. The jumble's been in archives this whole the jumble's been in archives the whole game. Yeah, I messed up. That was just bad bad but bad play by me. Uh, I, if if I had Yeah. Yeah, I threw the I threw this game completely. Um, I think if I I I, need, I needed to push harder for Amber. I needed to make them use the drum bowl. Um, I have lots of creature removal. I just, uh, this is this is yeah, this is definitely my game. I really messed this game up. Um, it's a terrible way to end the season too, but yeah, I totally messed this game up. Yeah, exactly, Zermis. I think um, I just like you know I had it in my head that um, that is true, and like I have lots and lots of C in this deck, and so I guess I probably shouldn't have been like I had BDQ in the archives for how long? Like I really just like I should have been pushing the, for them to use the jumble so I could get rid of it instead of trying to play around not getting hit by it, because they have lots of like small amber control pieces. Um, I definitely, I definitely, I definitely, um, this is, yeah, not a well-played game for me, but. That happens sometimes. Perhaps. But it loses quite hard to a board wipe and heavy Yeah, I had considered that Gorlami. Um, honestly, I can't super remember that turn, so I don't know why I chose to do otherwise. Yeah, this will be on. This will be on YouTube as well. They played very well. They, um, you know, I think they, they held, yeah, they, they played very well. And it was just, I think, um, it was sort of my game to lose, and I had the answers, and I, I, yeah, I threw it. Yeah, girl, I mean, I think that's probably, that probably was a better play. Um, yeah, yeah, I did. Um, how many turns was this game? 22 turns. Yikes. Or I guess... 21 turns. No, they, but my opponent, but Pizza played very well. Man, I should have just, uh, yeah. I should have pushed the game a lot harder. Yes, you will.
Um, yeah. I mean, that's hard. This is this is a game I this is a game I need to do a vod review. I definitely need to do a vod review for. Yeah. Well, that's that is the nice part about this. One of the one of the really nice things about streaming these and and doing all the um. Yeah, I, I am, I am sick, so I'm. I mean, I won't give myself too much leeway because I think um, I don't think that was a contributing factor, but it definitely does. It definitely when you're under the weather, it definitely does. Um, it does hurt. Man, it's nice though with the online tournaments when you're sick, you can still play. So that is a nice. That is a, that is a nice part. This was a. This was a. Um, you know, an in-person tournament. There's no way I'm playing. Um, there's no way I'm going to the tournament with COVID. Well, I think that'll be. I think overall, like I said, I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll probably happily spend some time. Um, I make sure to see if they report it. Yeah. Um. I think in terms of bands. I banned Tomaz just because of how um, I think that honestly I think my one of the biggest problems I had this season um, uh, is Grunberg is that I wasn't super ha I'm never super happy to play Grunberg or the Craving Scout Senator right now. Now I, I talked about the Craving Scout Senator and it's it's. I am not happy to play the Screaming South Senator often because of how it plays with um, all the C in the league, and so that, that makes it that makes it like um, it was good when it was like a certain option it can play into a certain matchup, but like I think those matchups did um, yeah I can pull the Screaming South Senator list up. So this is the list. Uh, this is Screaming South Senator, um, and I quite like it. Like I really do think it's it's a very it's a very good seventy four. Um, yeah, it is. It is tough to have decks that you don't want to play. So like, it's it's not even like I don't want to play it. It's that I don't. I I have a really hard time finding the matchups where I actually want to play this deck. Um, and then it's sort of it was sort of one of those pieces where this is doing a similar thing that Samir does, but Samir does it much much better. And so, you know, and then at that point, it's like, well, Samir never gets banned anymore because I've got Margaret. So, Mar so people have smart have wisened up to the dark tidings, and with something like Jeroto and and the Kruzusir Judge, Samir's never getting doesn't really get banned anymore. So Samir does a much better job of of what the Craving Scout Center wants to do. And then, so I never want. I, so if if I'm pick, picking between these two, I, I'm going to pick Samir. Um, so the the biggest thing is that, and then another point is that, with the amount of C in the league, which is which is high, I mean, the, the people aren't, especially with how dominant MM is, um, people aren't, and like the Craving Scout Center isn't isn't is, you know, it's not really fast. Like the speed here is in two drop pips in the auto encoder, but you're not, you are ne very 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 rarely discarding cards in this deck. You discard things like causal loop. But even then, you don't really want to do that because you want to be tucking away things like bring low. Um, so like, and then it's like a Technosaurus, Munchlings. So like, the speed is not really actually um, as high as it looks. Um, it really it plays it plays like a zero efficiency deck more often than not. Um, and also like you're not calling logos very often. So you're not getting a lot of value out of the QMEX. Really, what you want to be calling is um, the Sanctum and the Saurians, and the Logos is sort of like you know you go into that every now and then. But you're hoping to get established a board, and like the Sanctum and Saurians are good. Um, like these are both really good houses. If this was a, f I don't know, like if this, this Logos was full of efficiency, 
um, the eclectic inquiries and stuff like that. This would, deck would be so good. Um, because stuff like if you can get if you can get the uh, one of the Fabians to stick, it's really really good. Um, because nine capture pips. Um, exactly double Ludo. It's got the Optio Gorkus. It's got it's got Dark Centurions. Um, it's got double spoils of battle, so like, it does a ton. Like, like the 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 capturing and then the dumping of amber really does a lot of work in the in this deck. And it's got a Joya font to the eye. Like it really does do um, commandeer. Like it does a lot of really good things, and I quite like it. The problem with it is just that there's a lot of targeted C in the league, and so and Putting it into most decks, you end up in a situation where you know the the Fabians die immediately, or the and it's not fast enough to necessarily get the recycle them back quick enough. So like you know like the Fabians will die before they get to use them, and most of the capture pips are in Logos and Sarian, so it's not like you get a lot of stealing right off the bat with Fabians. Um, and then the Ludos get killed before anything else gets killed. And it often has, it it doesn't often it also got eight pips. So it's often in a situation where it's it can't create the dominant board state. It really it does create it creates really well because um, if this board gets established, like either the Saurian or the Sanctum board gets established, mostly the Saurians, it does a does a lot. Because you know, like in, with the, the double Ludos, you're more than happy to usually crash the Citizen Strix after a few steals. And that that amber's just gone, and you can ward it, and you can you can right you can basically use the dark centurions to move um, to as as um, what is it shrines monument monument to Ludo, um, so you can use you know you can use the dark centurions that way where you move remove the amber and put it to the common supply and you ward them and. Um, makes the amber really, really tough to get off. Like a worded Opio Gorkus is hard to deal with. A worded Shrix is hard to deal with. A worded Cornerstone Octavia is hard to deal with. Plus, you can ward your Ludos. So, like the deck does its thing really well. It's just hard to do that in this league. So, I mean, maybe it doesn't come out. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I'm more down. I'm more reticent to play it than I should be. Um, which certainly happens in decks. You know, like a. I could have just fallen into a lull where. Um, the Craving Scout Senator, because it has, well, it actually, it actually doesn't have a very, doesn't have a super high record in in the NKFL so far, um, which is also sort of reinforcing that. So I think this will probably come out. I have some good candidates, I think, for next season to come in for it. I have um, some things I've I've picked up on the secondary market that I'm pretty happy with. Uh, one thing that I also um, would like to bring. Is I'd like to bring either more rush, more more artifact, a little bit more artifact control, um, because one thing that I do lack quite a bit is artifact control in this lineup. The only thing I really have is um, Margaret. I think is the only deck that has artifact control in it, um, which isn't super ideal because Greenberg has none. This has none. Margaret has a neutron shark. Judge has none. Has certainly has none. Um, Samir has a Nexus. Kirby Sassano doesn't have any, and Grunberg doesn't have any, so like, I don't think Jerito has any. It's like, no artifact control, or, oh, it's a Boro. Jerito's got a Boro, which can be good. Hit the market, well, I've, I've done a little bit, I've, so I've done, I, the, um, I've done a little bit of shopping around, um, this season of NKFL, and I've definitely picked up a few decks, so I, but if I have... I picked up basically. I picked up like three or four decks. Um, none of them, ex none of them expensive. I think the most I paid, the highest amount I paid for was thirty dollars for one of them. So I, I bought up. I picked up like a you know, thirty dollar Worlds Collide that I'm fairly happy with. Um, I think it's sort of it's a different, but come on, I think it fills the slot well of um, the Craving Scout Senator. It also brings really, really heavy R. So I'll probably sub that one in. Um, I also think it's a lot less susceptible to just like one board wipe. Um, Cause I think that one has like, that one has like four R, like four R in it. It's got, it's got a crazy killing machine, neutron shark. Um, 
got a, I can't remember it all now, but it's got it's got a bunch. It's got a few um, good art tools that'll come in for that, which I'm, I'm excited. I am excited to play that one. And then the for Grunberg, I might keep Grunberg in because Grunberg is such a weird deck because it, it has so much scaling amber control and so much board wipe. But it doesn't do super well into Rush, because I need those Scaling Amber Control right away. But then Scaling Amber Control is also like Effort and Principles. So. Man. Greenberg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Effort and Principle, um, it has. It's Amber Control is an Anthony. The Effort and Principle, Autovac. So, it has like not a ton of creatures, and they're mostly in um, Star Lions and Dis. But I also really like the Mind Fire. I think the Mind Fire is a really, a really nice thing. It's got the marker Dis. It's got like I can mark into Gateway or mark into Implosion or um, do stuff that has like pretty, pretty nice disruption. Six mutants, like, like half of its creatures kind of are mutants. So, like, this may or may not come out. But it's in there for now, and until I find... I have some things that might replace it, because I think, I think one of the pieces I might need more is just... Yeah, the low the low E is exactly what's concerning Dinobot. It does it does it does the amber it produces is, is higher than twelve. I say it probably it's probably true expected amber is probably like sixteen. Um, but the expected amber is quite low. Yeah, that is that's exactly what I played. Yeah, the Greenberg is what I played last game. I certainly could have played it. Um, and like I said, it's expected amber. Expect it's expected amber is better than twelve. It probably plays like sixteen or eighteen. Um. I just I, I, I might just need more practice with Grunberg um, to understand its place in my lineup a bit better. Um, I also told so like I'm not super comfortable with it, and because I'm not super comfortable with it, um, I'm less um, inclined to play it. So it might just need more practice. The other piece is um, yeah, Grunberg is a weird one. I, I think I opened it. Like I opened it in a display, and I was like, "Oh, this is like super cool." Um, you know, it was an 80, right? So it, if I go to like my my decks, it's my second highest deck. Um, that's part of the problem with Greenberg. Um, but it's also it does have that nice thing of Gorlami pointed out earlier is right. It's like I can I can do stuff like I can bouncing Death Quark the Anthony or I can bouncing Death Quark you know the, the capture targets. Yeah, that's sort of the problem with it. I have a I have a couple AOAs um, that I've purchased. Um, that I think are do are a lot better tempo decks, um, which I think is is probably what I'll be bringing next. Which is one of those one of those I'll probably be bringing next season. Um, I'll probably I'll probably be bringing two AOEs into my lineup next season. Would be my guess. Um, one other thing is that like because I, it's also hard because I'm in this season I've been facing actually that's not I guess like. Like Ganusa's lineup was really hard to deal with for these decks because it was a lot of rush. Um, like even Judge, you know, like the Ganusa high rolled on the on the game two with Sloan and just 
you know, it was like, that was like 20 something amber and by turn three and it was, the game was over. Because I used my submersive principle too early. So that's brutal. But, um, yeah. Like stuff like, um, I'm giving away secrets. But like, Samir, Jerto, Margaret, and Judge are all gonna stay. So then it becomes something like, I probably bring in my new deck that has all the R and for S Scout Senator, and then for Grunberg, I probably swap in a very tempo-y and rushy AOA deck. So I'll probably do that. I've got two AOA decks. Then it's kind of hard because, like, I have a, th I have a, th I have sort of hard. It's gonna be a tough decision. These two slots are gonna be really hard to fill. That is something that I will we'll need to spreadsheet. The if Grunberg had more way, a better way to generate amber. If it had a better way to generate amber, that is going to be that would be perfect. But the amber generation is sort of the problem. But and you saw, but you saw in like that last game, right? Like I could have pushed, I could have pushed a little bit harder on amber, and I didn't. Um, but the capture, the capture and like stuff like implosions, um, being some of the C is, is a problem. However, it also kind of sucked because the armor officer now didn't really get to pop off. But if the armor officer now gets to pop off, then whew, doing well, doing well there. Anyways, that's that is um, also. Before we go though, and I'm, I'm not going to go quite yet, but just sort of in the uh, wrap it up for a Swindle Team events for the um, some announcements. Swindle Team events for is signups end September 30th, and um, that is a doppelganger's format. The link is in there. Um, Karen and I did a whole feature on it. Um, which you know what, I will pull up for y'all pull up for you all right now and I will put that in the link in the description so you can go watch the video um, if you want to see if you want to see Judge to performing really really well um, you can go check out this video um, that is a super fun um, Judge does some crazy stuff the I play Karen brought a pretty, another pretty crazy, um, she brought Brano, she brought Bono, not the U2 singer, um, but the deck, and that is, um, that, w oh no, she brought, she brought, uh, Cat Burglar, which is her, she brought Cat Burglar and Bono, but, uh, she ended up playing Cat Bur Burglar, and I got a double Archimedes, a Sharkimedes deck that is super, super cool, uh, I had a ton of fun playing. Um, and both the games are super tight, uh, really close games, really cool games, and um, yeah, if you want to see if you want to see Judge um, play against a pretty good Genka um, and see how that turns out, go check out um, go check out the video. Um, and then other than that, it's I'll be playing NK NKFL Sealed coming up soon, and I will also be playing. Running. You should look out for the Kagi signups. I will probably, um, I will make an announcement on the Kagi channel when they're finally, when their phone stuff is finalized, and I'm not sick, and I have time to do it. And then yeah, 
that you can look out for me. I probably won't be playing Swindle Kingdoms, even though it looks really cool just because of time constraints. Um, but definitely playing Swindle Team Events 4. So, and then the KFPL qualifiers. Adaptive Best of 1 is, adaptive best of one is the capped, a capped, a SAS capped adapt, adapt, adaptive best of 1 is the next four, is the next event. Really, really recommend um, coming out to those. $10 buy in, $10 USD buy in. Um, they usually go like four hours, you know, like three to four hours, three to five hours um, on Saturdays through every third th every third Saturday of the month for the next few months. Um, go check that out. Uh, sign up if you can. I know I know it's a busy time of the year, um, but those are those are will be a ton of fun. I'll be streaming the ones that I, I I am a part of, which won't necessarily be all of them, but some of them. And yeah, and then this Sunday. Sunday, 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 what you need to do is come check out the train. Whoops, that is a caps lock. The stream train that'll be happening. Dinobot and Zoc will be kicking us off. Oh man, I need to stop hitting this. Um, Dinobot and Zoc will be kicking us off at 2 a.m. Eastern time. I'll bring it up right here. Behold the beauty that is this promotional material that Zoc and Dinobot put together. It's beautiful. This is in support of Ghost Galaxy. Go check it out. September 25th, 24 hour Twitch marathon. Um, we've got tons of content creators. We've got uh, Dinobot and Zoc kicking, kicking us off at 2 a.m. Eastern Stand Eastern Eastern Time. Real Player One, Anxious Pirate, and Justice Blinded. Um, Call of Discovery with Zach Armstrong is going to be joined by Orion of Flocks and All. That's going to be dope. I hear that there there may or may not be an exciting piece revealed there. Maybe. Um, it's going to be myself and Karen um, on Swindle Dust Chronicles. So not this stream, but we're going to be doing Swindle Dust uh, Swindle Dust Chronicles there. And um, you're gonna have a ton of fun. We're going to be featuring um, a game format called Underdog from that uh, is it was developed by Karen. It is a point bidding format uh, where players are rewarded for um, winning with with what both with what, what both players consider to be the weaker deck. And so how it'll work is that both players bring a deck. Um, you bid points on the deck. So you can say, you, you basically, you, you say, you, you simultaneously vote which deck is stronger. If one deck is simultaneously voted as stronger, um, it is deemed the underdog. And then if you win with the under, and then you get to play with whichever one you want, then you get to bid on whichever one you want to choose for. Um, and if you win with the underdog, you get like three points. I actually can't remember quite the rules. You're gonna have to read the rules yourself. Let me go to the final swindle. We go to finalswindle.com. We go to formats. We go to underdog. Right here, you go to details, and I'll paste this in chat. I need to make those commands. Um. And yeah, it's very, very fun. And then this, the under format underdog will be added to the triad tool, the more triad tool. Um, at some point, not, I don't think it'll be, it won't be done for the, for the stream on Sunday, but it will be added to that. So it'll be super fun. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be, a, it'll be a good time. Come out, watch everyone you can, stay up for 24 hours to watch this whole stream. If you don't, I'll be disappointed. Um, we're going to end with Tabletop Royale, Wild Worm Hole, and then Zoc as well. Zoc will, will close us out from 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. We've got Mortivus joining us. We've got uh, the Captain, Jason the Captain Kirk for the NKFL is being joined by Amber Medes on their channel, the Captain's Deck. Um, Lavinus Twitch, Sloppy Lab Work is going to be very sloppy around 3 p.m. Dinobot is going to be showing us some swole dinos at 4 p.m. One Star Peeps is going to be kicking us off at 6, and uh, then yeah, then that'll roll into Tabletop Royale and uh, Wild Wormhole. So it should be a really, really, really fun day. 
go check out the game found. We've got the counter. We've hit 700 here. Oh, look, there's my mouse. We've hit 758. We've crossed the crucible, the crucible of languages. Second stretch goal. If you have the means, please go and back it. Only do it if it's financially responsible for you. But do go check that out and come hang out with us, all of us, or as many of much of us as you can, on Sunday. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Zoc. Thank you, Joe. Uh, thank you, Gorlami, for showing up. Uh, thank you, Tanzida, for the follow. Really appreciate that. And, um, yeah, I will catch all of you as well. I know anxious, I'm sure Anxious Pirate is going back to studying. But it was fun having them here. And thank you also, Zeramis, for uh, showing up and watching out. Team Swindle, represent. Thank you. I will get well soon. I am feeling better. All I'm feeling. I'm feeling better than I did early in the week. So at least the road to recovery isn't as gnarly as it was last time. So thanks so much, everyone. You all have a good night, and I will see you all on Sunday. See you, everyone. Safe forging, and see you all soon. Peace.